And just for the record, today is April 4th in the year 2024. My name is Tina Dodds. I'm here with medium Karen Bakirin, and we're doing a spiritual health check for Brandon Mabe, who is 38 years old from Atoka, Oklahoma. Just let me know when we are connected with Brandon. Good to go. We're right. connected. Very good. Thank you. So do we have permission? Yes. Okay. So we'll start then by scanning through his outer etheric field, checking through all the frequency ranges and asking for the most important things to come forward first. And just let me know what you begin to notice there. There's initially upon connecting I was getting a feel of what felt like cellophane around the field didn't look like it was fully closed but I was getting like a feel of a, like a weird kind of shape around like it wasn't like how things are just nicely wrapped it was kind of like all over the field and creating like really weird um you know like like if you were to shoot a super ball it would kind of go a little bit everywhere mm -hmm. um there's a lot of electricity in here. Hmm. So I noticed that too. And there's um, stuck energy definitely in here too. Um, I was also able to connect with what felt like a very thick octopus-like energy that is working his field, manipulating what's going on around him. And it's like, you could see the different tentacles that are kind of playing into other people. So we've seen this before. So it was very like, um, you know, like the old Duplo, like Lego toy things, mm -hmm. like the people. Anyway, the people, yeah. Yeah, like I was just seeing like that, like different kinds of characters on the, on the tentacles. And it's just like indicating how they are played in his life. Yeah. So... Uh, there's that and I was also getting an energy of what felt like the shoe bill hmm. the shoe bill can play I do feel that this energy is also what is manipulating or playing through the x hmm. has a very like um I'm just getting like you know with the big it's a really big bird so I mean like how it's like hands are kind of like on its hips and looking bitchy like I am just getting that feeling hmm. but is able to create or augment or amplify her anger or whatever it is it's definitely having access um so I do validate that from her vaccine was putting her in the back seat and this energy is coming in. Hmm. So, um, okay. So there's that. I was just checking to see anything else. A lot, like I said, a lot of static because I'm feeling there's, I guess, pulling energy from himself and that's sticking onto the cellophane. So it kind of like is being siphoned away from him and then coming and getting stuck here. Um, there are energies and entities, of course, that are coming in and not necessarily feeding off of, but like they have it, they have the access to it if they wanted. So it's just like, again, like either scattering him or pulling energy out so that it's, um, yeah, it's hard to pull down, like to ground fully. The ground, yeah. Yeah. A lot of scattered thoughts also like coming in and out and within this space too, you know, being implanted by um, entities around. Uh, I do feel like it's more so in a frequency type energy and also implanted through the technology that's in the body through the shot. So I do get a feel of a lot of them. Spike proteins are not that, sorry. It's the um, nanotechnology that has already formed inside to create that network. And so mm -hmm. is able then to pick up on the, you know, the web around and all the information that's coming in. So he's picking up on collective things too. Sometimes people close by frequency towers, let's say there's a lot of information that's coming through that way as well. And so he could pick it up 
because a lot of his consciousness is technically on the roof of the cellophane it's it's like acting like um an antenna yeah an antenna pulling it in Hmm. i'm curious how long this octopus has been here manipulating i feel like it's been there for a long time yeah quite some time do you notice the access point for this is it was it in this life or another life well, I do feel it's a generational thing because I'm connecting to a uh, grandmother, grandfather energy. Just trying to get a feel of which side it's on. I'm leaning more towards mom's side. It's the maternal side. Mm, hold on, let me see if there's more info. Because I do see initially like they've been manipulated. Mm. And then it's like has have allowed this energy to come down so i'm just trying to see how the entity came in with them it just feels like together they may have experienced something very traumatic i couldn't tell you what it was but there's i do see in their timeline like linear timeline there's a stamp where both of them had experienced something quite traumatic hmm. And this entity came in and I see like the, again, like the, that te- the tentacles coming in to them. Mm. Mm. How, like how far back grandma and grandfather, like mom's parents or farther back? I feel like one more up. So his, uh, not his mom, mom's grandparents. So on the mom's side as well so yeah fourth up okay. no three up so his great grandparents yeah okay and how has this been affecting the family line it just feels like a having this energy come in um again creating and manipulating what goes on around in the environment so it feels as if like all I'm seeing it's that it it comes around the person in question or like for for Brandon for example, and it creates an isolating effect. Mm. Like how you I see a circle just being cut out around him, and it's be it's very isolating because it's like everybody around is affected by this in some shape or form. Mm. Mm-hmm. So either like making him feel inferior or um having his back up against the wall, isolated, um, not knowing who to trust. Like it, it's just creating a lot of these feelings inside that are very, you know, it's hard to to sit with at times, not being able to really feel comfortable or safe, of course. So it's, yeah, it's, it's just kind of cutting him out and, and making him feel like, as if like the floor is lava and he's like the only one here. Like he can't get off this, this space. Hmm. Is there... Was there a contract that was created here between the great grandparents and this entity? There is like some kind of, I'm getting the feeling of either desperation or pleading. So like when you're desperate, you plead, you know? Yeah. So something like that. And so it's like, uh, I guess upon pleading or praying, to something this energy Mm. took the call Mm. and so so i feel like this prayer or this energy could have then you know taken i don't know i feel like a lot of these arrogant type energies they take on the role as like you know the false god or whatever it is that they're praying being prayed on and prayed to for example Mm -hmm. yeah What were you saying? Um, so this entity answered the call and what did it do for them? I don't feel that there was any like sort of gain, if anything, it feels more so like a numbness. And again, like a like electricity, it's an electric type thing, like where it it's kind of like numb or you know when you feel ungrounded like how you get like the tingles in your feet like but they're not grounded tingles it's like the dissociated tingles Mm. 
because I feel like that entity comes in and takes up space, especially like with within the crack of their foundation of experiencing that traumatic event or whatever it is that they experienced. Mm -hmm. Whether that was together or not, I feel like there was some kind of quote unquote synchronistic trauma that happened very close together or if not the same time Mm -hmm. to them. Okay, so I feel called to take him out of this isolated space and to bring him into a space of sanctuary where he can kind of let go, like not feel in fear, but to just allow for the energies to um, to help heal. So we're going to help in a, um, to start the healing process. Um, removing that cellophane out of the space, um, anything that was lost in terms of his energy or siphon parts or uh, soul fragments, for example, are going to be filtered, healed, and called back to him. Um, so that whole cellophane thing has been destroyed. The entity, the um, shoe bill has also, any cords that are affiliated with the X have been cut, any contracts also have been burned. So this energy is like kind of out of this space, um, I guess in, in a way trying to intimidate. I feel like it has an effect on an inner child part of his that is intimidated by that. There is still like, you know, fear, of course, of like, you know, her having so much power over him, you know, by holding the kids hostage, to, you know, away and away from him. So we're help, <clears throat> helping to create a separation in, in terms of that energy having uh, power over him hmm. or manipulating him in any way of feeling inferior or um, if not unconsciously in fear of her. So that has been removed. Um, that inner child, sorry. I was just going to ask how old the inner child part is. Um, No more than six. It feels like, yeah, really young, maybe like four, like so somewhere there not feeling um safe at all i feel like the timidness or at least you know like kind of hiding behind mom or dad's you know like in the back mm -hmm. and holding on you know that kind of thing so it has a little bit of an intimidated type feel to this boy so we're also bringing him to sanctuary in order to receive healing and for him to um release the fear around it and to allow for him to be free and play so we're allowing for that energy of play to come through um let me see here where was I? Um, you were clearing the shoe bill, the contracts okay, and yeah. cords, okay, the cellophane, so the octopus. Yeah. Okay. So the shoe bill I've chopped up and removed um, any hidden contracts or any hidden type things. We're also clearing through <clears throat> branded subconscious because there's a lot of implants there that have been put along his lifetime. So lifetimes and lifetime in this one. So we're clearing that out. I do feel that there are dark energies or entities, let's say agents that have been following him in different dimensions, mm. dreams, spaces. Um, there are things going on here. So we'll touch up on that, but I'm clearing out the subconscious in the here now, like what belongs to him in this as a core self and what's affecting him. So we're clearing that. Um, any excess of thought forms, beliefs, programs that don't really serve him allowing for him to really open up his mind so not to get too caught up in different like the belief systems so to really open up that so he not get caught in things so that it doesn't it's they're just other traps so just to be conscious and aware of those things um other excessive thoughts that may have been accumulated over because of the cellophane that was there and that had been picked up through the nanotechnology in the body also being removed uh, let me see. Yeah, so we're really taking the selfie and like shaking it. Again, like sifting through what belongs to him and what doesn't. How did there that are get reptilian... there? Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. it. I do feel it. It's relative to, um, a couple of things. So there, yeah, it has to do with a little bit of that um octopus energy mm -hmm. that came generationally. Mm -hmm. So it's it is acting as a suppressant and whatever had happened in the generational line um i also wanted to take note too that the contracts within that line have also been burned so that and all family members that have been affected by this entity have been uh freed from it 
So just to say that. Um, you mentioned see. reptilians? Yes, there's reptilians, there's greys, mm -hmm. there's insectoids, there's Draco, there's a lot. I mean, there's false light here. There's a lot of things that have accumulated over time um, that have been stuck via the cellophane. So these energies are present and in there affecting him in ways that they could be manipulating the outcomes of his experiences or others again. So it's almost in a way like adding on to what that uh, octopus has already been doing, but mm -hmm. then these being in the field and, you know, amplifying or, or taking part in their own way through those that are around. So it's, it's a very manipulated reality that he's been having. And, um, yeah, it's there's not really much more to it, but to observe moving forward and how it is manipulated and how he as himself does not have to. It's just all you have to do is take care of yourself. Don't worry about things that are happening around you. It's really just you are you have to claim back your power, your um, your energy, your field in order to illuminate. And so. With that being said, it's like to realize the little power that we do have on a collective level, but that you can preserve and maintain your own. So it's like you're not responsible for anything else outside of you, apart from just living as authentically as you possibly can in your life and to just be yourself. And that will, you know, either ripple out or plant a seed in another as just you know giving an example being the example because I feel like there's a lot of power being lost in and I guess what happened so I'm just remote viewing like what kind of happened within the situation between him and his ex and how that kind of played out but again I do see that this entity was also there taking opportunity in order to mirror and you know make this situation a lot bigger than what it was and, and so, of course, him. yeah, and of course, you know, like with that octopus being there, you know, getting that neighbor involved and then it kind of rippling thereafter, like there was a lot yeah. of manipulation that was going on and it didn't have to be that way. So um, I am getting a feel in order for him, like I do, I do feel that he was kind of pushed, I guess, energetically intimidated and pushed out. So, um, which is probably why he's in a different state. Mm. So I am feeling like regain your energy, reset yourself here where you're at, and then build and then go towards. So it push back, like, I mean, your energy to be pushed back um, in order to reclaim your space. So yes, I do get a feel like of, you need to, this is the space, like, because, you know, in a way, yes, I was intimidated and pushed here, but now I'm at a choice point. What do I want to do being here? I can go back to where I came from. So like towards your children. So I'm seeing this formation of going towards your children, but I'm not in a good space right now energetically. So that's not a good idea. So take advantage of where you're at now with the distance to regain confidence regain your space make money do what you have to do to strengthen yourself back and then move forward towards mm. them yeah i feel that that gave me chills yeah because the children need you to be strong they need you to be the example you don't have to say a word you just have to be yourself your actions and who you are will be enough so it feels as if because it was manipulated before, the more that you talked, the more that it was not going in your favor. I do feel the manipulation around that and it didn't play out good. It just doesn't, when you go against the matrix, you are going to, they're going to highlight that. Mm. So it's just being aware of what, just know how to play the game in your favor. So it it's going to, call a lot of restraint but again your energetic boundaries are going to be very important here and yeah and being an observer of what's going on so that you know how to strategically make your moves that are going to work in your favor and in your children's favor 
So it's really like all I'm seeing, it's really like strengthen here, gain insights, get get confident, make money, and and then I see the movement. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thank you for that. Anything else that you're noticing right away in the outer etheric? Um, puppeting. So there's a lot of the strings, the marionette strings that I'm seeing here. Um, it really looks like a stage, mm. the way that I'm seeing it. Um, but I feel like it's not necessarily just for him. I mean, this is just like a global thing that's going on, of course. You know, everybody's just being puppeted and used, especially those that are not in their power. It's easy to be possessed and, and taken over and you know, used for the bidding of like the higher ups here. So there is a lot of puppeting going on, but it is like, I am seeing in his field that it is, it's kind of in part, like kind of what I saw puppeting, like via the, the uh, octopus, mm -hmm. but I am seeing the strings going on. So it is like, it's going on. It's mm -hmm. been going on. And these other beings that you mentioned, the reptilians, grace, et cetera, were they, they working with this octopus or for the octopus? Um, I don't, Sometimes with, sometimes not. Like, I feel like these are like independent consultants. Like, it's weird to, you know, like they're doing their own thing. It's just how everything here is just so demonic and how they're they're just being projected in, in people to create this overlap and multi-layers of trying, you know, to, of being buried and suppressed. Yeah. So, you know, again, it's just gaining your strength and power so that you can really amplify yourself and to kind of push your way out kind of like the hulk like it's really just getting out of that suppressed space and state of being okay um, so yeah i i mean it, of course they just take advantage where they see it and so given what it is it's like yeah coming in easy so those contracts are also being burned and taken care of um any Cords also um, are being cut. Um, so we have taken Brandon out and he's in the sanctuary space with his inner child. Um, we've also set the intention of calling other inner children forward. Um, so I'm, I will inner children and subpersonality parts. So the traumatized parts inside that are split. So I am getting um, like another, a 17 year old that's coming through uh 22 14 they're kind of like all over the place here two years old 12 8 18 29 32 36 those are the ones that are sticking out so um they're receiving healing as well and with intention to uh reintegrate into the core self do any of those have attachments of their own um those have been removed and taken care of a lot of parasitic type energies so every they're all receiving the intervention before they get reintegrated very good thank you can we check here for the matrix pod yes yeah, so here um yeah, so here's the pod. We're removing any excess energies that are in his field and unplugging him. So there are about like nine cords present. So I'm clearing that, pulling that out. I do get a feel that there are like projections going on. So um, what feel like clone-like energies uh, meta energies I know we're doing the meta clearing too so I'm just but I'm just saying what I'm seeing here mm -hmm. um, so clone like energies meta energies like of avatars um, SSP stuff too so I'm seeing like um, being used in alternate dimensions and whatnot um, so that was one of his questions these multiple versions of himself anything else that you're noticing there These are pretty much the main ones that have been taken from the the larger um, 
core oversoul of this core self. Mm -hmm. So intention to call them all back healing and to burn any contracts related to SSP stuff uh, would probably suggest going deeper into the exploration if, you know, to, to do more healing work, because there are, what I'm seeing are like um, holes in the fields. Hmm. So I'm doing what I can here um, with his field, like the court. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to interdimensional stuff, there are, there's other things. So we're, we're sending intention to heal as much as we can throughout the dimensions and calling back what, what is ready to come forward. Because I do feel that there's going to be further exploration, not necessarily with SSP stuff, but there's just deeper things. Mm -hmm. I know he has tons of questions. So yeah, these are the things. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to set intention as much as we can to really pull what we can. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. So uh, where was I? I did the meta. We were... Not I, I didn't do meta yet. I just acknowledge meta. Matrix so the cords. avatars, yeah, matrix cords have been pulled. Um, any, uh, what do you call it? Clones. Hold on. So I'm seeing that there are a few clones here. Uh, six clones. They kind of remind me a little bit of like RoboCop. Like they look kind <laughs> of having like that kind of stature. Um, even like with the whole facial helmet thing, like. Are they active is the question. Maybe three are inactive. So we are deactivating the ones that are and pulling his energy back. So anything that is animating these clones are being pulled back. So if they have to run on you know, or become NPCs, like, because his signature is no longer, they've been pulled back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so if they're animated just by the program, program, I get a yes by higher self, like, yeah, let them go. But as long as the essence is pulled, so essence is being pulled and healed, reintegrated into the oversoul, the, the core oversoul. Um, yeah, the SSP stuff. I mean, like these, this is also part SSP, but there's also other, it goes in layers. It's multi-layered. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, like whatever's ready to come up, we are pulling back healing and reintegrating. Um, I feel called to do meta clearing because we're just seeing it right now. So yeah. there are about eight avatars that are, I would say maybe you know, hold on, six of them that are fully downloaded, two that are in process of, so they're still pulling data. So we are pulling back all information that has been downloaded from his lifetime, this lifetime, and other information that is being pulled via the subconscious. So that could also be stuff that has been implanted that we had seen things that are manipulated through these entities and whatnot. So creating like, again, layered information that they, that could be pulled from, from his field, mm -hmm. the whole field and animating these avatars. So it's just really important again, um, as we give all meta clearing uh, clients to just be aware of the, you know, the consumption that you're in, the stuff that you're, um doing on your phone laptop whatever it is tv even it, it really because like the tvs now are also pulling through the frequencies in the black hole like the portals that are there um uh, so it's like yeah being aware of where your energy is being pulled your apps um you know your terms and agreements the cookies anything to that effect and also learning how to um end contracts just consciously you know when you have interactions with people like even us it's just like i burn that contract like we don't have anything thereafter you know mm -hmm. so it's just good to get into that practice um so the avatars itself we're just pulling all energy out and uh getting rid of all 
like the database, uh, the motherboard, like anything that is holding the information, any backups, any contracts. Also with the meta, we are also burning across the board. There's a lot of stuff coming through, you know, like in terms of the Google and, you know, all the extra things that also branch off of different apps and, you know, all their, their trickery. So we're burning through all of that. And it also goes back through history. Like, so when we didn't know better, you know, back when we used technology and how it kind of accumulated over time. Mm -hmm. So that is also being uh, removed, burned, cords cut to any AI robots or whatever is working through the system. taking those avatars out of their own pods, you know, and removing them. Um, as we're like taking out all the information, we're also destroying the avatars so that they don't have any use. Of course, you know, like we're not immune after a session like this. Again, it's just, that's why it calls for hypervigilance moving forward about what apps you use, what you're consenting to, or, you know, how they get you in the trickery ways, like the cookies, like I said, and the um, other stuff. Terms and agreements terms and agreements, plugins, like all of that junk. So yeah, clearing through all that. Okay, so that is, we're pulling it out like, okay, so far three are good, four. Yeah, so destroying anything that has to do with this data um it would be good like you know just to do like that uh go through your apps and really pick and choose the ones that you really absolutely have to keep because it's like you know try to keep it to a minimum turn off your wi-fi at night you know like do the things that you need to do like as usual or put your phone on airplane or whatever it is to just try to stay away and so that the frequencies are not activating um even the technology inside mm. because again like it's so subtle how they 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 form like the webs and yeah. how they form it's such a slow grow and expansion that we don't even realize how it's it's webbing into us yeah maybe we should go into the vax clearing and clear that nanotechnology yeah um yeah there's a lot of uh, the nanotech that has accumulated like i had already mentioned so we're going through um, really vacuuming everything from top to bottom. So really going through the cracks of the brain, the crevices, everything like that, um, through the muscles, all throughout the body, soft tissue, tendons, through the joints, like everywhere that these things can hide. We're placing a filter like on the heart. So we are allowing for clean blood to filter through and removing any excessive stuff that's getting caught by the filter. There is a bit of like, you know, clogging going on in terms of the coagulation and the um, microclotting of the blood. Spike proteins I'm seeing like just in a general sense, like when I scan the body or looking at it forward, there's different like random spots of this uh, spike proteins that are present as well as even shedding. So, hmm. um, so I'm seeing like one in the head, what around like the left lung. Tracing that down closer to um, or in the diaphragm, left diaphragm. Three in the intest uh, intestinal area to uh, male rich, male parts. Like, so there's a, it's a little bit everywhere around the pelvis, couple in the thighs and um, two on the right side of the shin calf area. So those have been removed. Um, any of the shedding, whatever, like uh, that he had gotten from the environment have also just been easily ripped off and vacuumed out. The nanotech, it's, yeah, like I said, a little bit everywhere. So we're really thoroughly vacuuming and filtering through, ensuring that there's not like accumulation and, you know, hidden places we're sending a lot of energy through um let's say through the mouth and going through the digestion so th filtering through the stomach and all the intestines um filtering also through the major organs 
heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, pancreas, like everything like that. Really combing through. I do feel a density in my legs. So there's a lot of it that kind of has settled in the bottom. Mm -hmm. So again, like we'd mentioned, like there's networks that are being built. And so because of gravity, it does go to the ground. So it's really important to um, recommend it to do detoxing of uh, the heavy metals or even doing uh, baths if you can, salt baths with Epsom salts and to uh, try to clear as much of it as you possibly can from the body. I mean, it's never like a hundred percent, but I mean, any, any of this intervention is helpful. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Heavy metals. So again, like we're just bringing in like the, the magnet and like going from top to bottom, clearing out anything that is stuck in there. Again, when we do energetic work, you have to back it up with the physical. So if you could do heavy metal detox, that would be great too. And this goes for childhood vaccines as well. So it's really just across the board, like how the accumulation has happened. Uh, contracts in terms of like with the, um, yeah, contracts with the shot, like the company of the shots or whatever like that have also are being called up. There are like two entities that are here. They're kind of background, like in the background, mm -hmm. but they've also been, with everything else so they're there um they're playing into like what has been accumulated into the subconscious in terms of like pulling in like the information worldwide information and trying to create like a you know quick in the network ne networking process okay so that those entities have been chopped up and removed contracts with them have also been burned cut Again, any access to his DNA or to his energetic signature in terms of his biology have been protected. We're also like really creating strong protection around him for that. So that not also taken via the, um, because there's also uh, with that network comes the dark web. Mm. So access to the dark web. So we're also removing that and that also ties in with meta stuff too. So it's also, we're also cutting those ties too. Black goo and, uh, I always forget, what's it called again, the other thing? Uh, graphene. Graphene. I can never remember that. Anyway, that we're also pulling out of the body. So really thoroughly vacuuming through the body. Um, again, also excess, again, every, a lot of it is in the knees down. Hmm. So it's all like pretty much settled there. So we're really trying to open up. I know we haven't gotten to the grounding yet, but this is also preventing the grounding. So mm -hmm. uh, grounding, just to answer the question while we're here, it's at about like 22% or so. So as we're, really declogging the the bottoms and really opening up the soles to allow for the the roots to come out and open so we're allowing for that clogging um declogging process and grounding his energy back bring it out to 100 percent as we're clearing through yeah i could see how it has created like um i'm seeing like I feel like um slides, like glass slides mm -hmm. going into the body. I don't know. I feel like they're just trying to create compartments mm -hmm. within him, like trying to split him in different ways. So again, like for him, for his energy to not have gained full access of the body. So it's also part of the tactic of separating and dividing. Mm -hmm. So those slot things were removing, so allowing for him to really take up more space within. Where did you see those? Um, just I was seeing one like right here in his chest area, and then another one like coming into the arm. So like trying to divide that way, and random spots like that. That was like the two main ones that I saw, but 
intention to remove all slut slit thing i don't know what they're whatever they're called so that's being removed there um okay so i'm just thoroughly going through again one more time to scan the body of any excess like vax energies or that are related to the, the more recent ones but we're also intention to uh clear what we can also for childhood stuff if there was any done mm -hmm. so we're clearing all that it's kind of satisfying in a way because like as i'm like you know the sound of the vacuum like when you hear when you get a good pull from the vacuum and you hear the those noises mm -hmm. Like I'm getting that as we go through the body. Okay, so that I feel like we can move on, but we can check back in there. The meta is complete. So we've set that boundary. All the avatars have been accounted for, pulled back, removed, um, okay. destroyed so that there's no they're no longer um activated or okay. so. Very good. That's Thank good. you. Okay, great. So let's zoom in closer and check for sovereignty. Are there any other negative entities attached here? Um, Little, I don't know what animal that is. I, I mean, I've seen it before. It looks like, um, I don't know, it has like, it's not a panda, but it has like a, I don't know if it's a monkey type Anyway, and it has like dark circles around its eyes, but hmm. anyway, I see that in the field, two of them kind of like behind, but I see them like coming through too, like in the front, like it's, but it's lower. Like, I feel like it's below the, his belly button, but they're there. Um, I would say like messing how they affect him is messing with the grounding, like really not allowing for him to also take up space in his body, um, feeding off any energies that are stuck here in the legs. Mm. Uh, yeah, again, like screwing with his foundation. So again, like he needs to get, he needs to strengthen himself. So again, like his foundation has been completely taken down, like or weakened. So this is also part of it. Um, but this is good. You know, it's good that we're seeing this because then he can rebuild. We want it to break down anyway, because we don't want this. This is not a, a true foundation. It's, it's just been kind of built upon on top of like just survival mm -hmm. stuff, like, yeah, like everybody else. So we just want to, we're taking it down completely and allowing for him to really build, rebuild himself, get the, um, the motivation back into him and to really just be, you know, looking forward not backwards you want them to yeah really be straight on going forward any cords or hooks from these entities mm, yeah cords going like into like the the back thigh uh both sides so the, mm. that has been removed um pulled out um other entities coming through astral type beings so i'm getting that they're coming in so pulling those, like removing those out of the field, um, not necessarily like affecting him in any way, but adding to the clogging effect of like his, his energy field. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard for him to get clarity, which I, I get, um, I really sense that. So it's just adding. So hopefully like with this, like now openness, he'll be able to have more bouts of like spaces where he could really ground be in peace and uh, be able to learn how to hear his own voice his yeah. own thoughts and being able to decipher what is really his and what isn't so this is just a good practice tool for him to strengthen that discernment okay so those in out and out yeah um vampiric type energy is present too so again sucking energy out of him anything that um yeah not allowing for him to really gain rest like i always feel like there's 
a low grade, like, uh, let's say anxiety that's running through. So that's preventing him from really resting when he does sleep. It's still as if working, you know, the still kind of staying up on some level. Mm -hmm. So that's because the body energies. Yeah. I'm sensing Mm -hmm. that predator. Mm -hmm. So that has been removed. Um, cords also have been cut. So not in the field anymore to feed off of. other characters here also like frankenstein again like a slowing down like a sloth effect so not being able i feel like it's hard for me to feel like i'm moving forward Mm -hmm. so pulling him back so removing that energy out any cords uh, contracts also cut and burned uh anything else clear perfect thank you okay taking a look at the inner etheric field how does that look um also wrapped up um so i do get the feel that this is now not not how we saw the cellophane on the outside but cellophane on the inside that is now neatly wrapped so we're removing that completely out of the field so again another way to um, either trap energies or insert energies and trap them in there so it's probably why we we're seeing like a lot of accumulated junk in here. So that has been removed from the field. Uh, the actual inner etheric is just in need of removing any um, glue. I don't know why that came through. I guess because it was stuck. So anything that is affiliated with that. So removing that out, re-optimizing strengthening and brightening up of this field and protecting it. I guess the glue was acting like device type things like that were, I guess, relaying information coming on the inside to pass it to the outside. Hmm. So any, that has been removed. Any other implants or devices in the body? Uh, you get a tracking like energies that I feel are being tracked via that shoe bill bird. Mm. So removing that out. So placing really strong invisibility around him. So not to be tracked or found energetically so that they're not able to either psychically implant or psychically pull or into, I don't know, whatever they do. So really breaking the, the channel that's coming into his field. From communicating in any way psychically. So tracking have been removed as well. Okay. Thank you. Any other implants or devices? No. Okay. And taking a look for any curses. None that are coming through. Any black magic spells? That feels like old past life things that are present. Uh, Yeah, definitely with like some sort of like old magician or something like that. Shape-shifting I'm getting as well. I feel like in that lifetime, Brandon was like what feels like a shoemaker. Hmm. interesting it's like he helped a lot of the community um almost in a way of assisting them in creating shoes for them um i guess also in in part one to help ground and two um to preserve the soul so their soul via the souls oh wow the shoe that's really cool that gave me chills yeah, so I'm seeing something to that effect of like helping to kind of like, I guess, bamboozle the entities or whatever is trying to pull in from like their soul out, like, but it's like they're able to channel their or hide their soul in this compartment in the shoes. So hiding the soul in the shoes? Soul. Like the soul. 
of the shoe or something like that. I, I, I don't really have the full details, but it's I, just something with the shoes. Okay. Well, just thinking deeper into that, I clarify. Yeah, it's almost like a grounding effect, like pulling all energy. The energy is like completely filling the body. And so when they wear the shoes, they're able to really ground. And so it's like the, they're fully embodied. And when they're fully embodied, that's when it's like the, I guess their divine essence is really taking up space. But there's a, a way that these shoes are connected to the owner, the, the person who is wearing them. Mm -hmm. And that if worn properly, yeah, it does the grounding effect, but it also is able to anchor the soul in completely or the spirit, like it's here in the feet. Mm. So it is in the soul of the shoes, like there's something with the soul of the shoes, but he's able to create that connection with the owner and the, like and he the uses shoes itself. Like he uses some kind of magic or technology in the. I feel like it's just there's some kind of intention. It's a it's definitely good magic, like white magic, if anything. That is like that intention of really becoming um, part of it, hmm. like. So yeah, it was like there is a helping a lot of folk in protecting themselves in this way giving them the ability to really ground fully and wow. to protect their souls via the soul of the shoes. So in order to protect the soul, the soul needs to be grounded in the body. Yeah. And the person has to be completely embodied in their physical vessel. So to learn how to create a strong relationship with the body, the body is really the, the protector it's mm. it, it plays a very vital role here in the matrix mm. so it could be in part like when you're not empowered it's going to work against you but when you know how to use your vessel it will you could program it to to do what it needs to do what it's supposed to do mm. so you can actually program it for protection mm-hmm and how is this relevant for Brandon's life now? Well, through that black magic, I, I think that's where we're at. Um, mm -hmm. Was in turn, I feel like, well, I guess this is where the curse energy does come through. So it wasn't, but it was mainly coming in through the black magic. Um, how they had used dark black magic uh, around this this um shoemaker. Shoe, shoemaker yeah so that he doesn't create these kind of things to to protect those that are fully sold here like uh real true souls so they cursed him cursed him via black magic and how did that affect him i just feel like he uh, there's something like his hands are are affected in some ways here in this lifetime and it's like not allowing for him to access that creative, the creative energy inside. Mm -hmm. It's like also removing that. Um, yeah, it's, it's really just stunting it. Like not being able to really get gain access to it. Who are the beings that behind this that did this? I don't know why, but it looks like the, the penguin from the. Uh, like mm -hmm. Danny DeVito, mm -hmm. you know, he was the penguin. Like I'm seeing a being similar to that. Mm -hmm. It's it's almost like a magician in a way, like it's just a dark magician. Mm -hmm. So is it that he's not able to access the creative energy of his hands in this life in order to build? or to create something to that effect um just what i'm really getting out of it is just more so in a way of like preventing that full access to that creative energy 
Yeah. But in that lifetime, his hands were his, what were the, the, um, creating, you know, there, that's, he needed to, to, to use his hands to do what he had to do. So it was just, um, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing like, uh, his hands like really turning in and, you know, becoming deformed in some way. So there was some stuff going on there. Hmm. Um, Hold on, I'm getting, I, I don't have it clear yet, but I'm seeing. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, because I'm seeing at the bottom of the sole, you know, like how the leather or the shoe, you can kind of brand it. Mm -hmm. I'm getting 144. Now the 144 oh. that I'm getting here, I'm just wondering like what that could mean. But I think that's just his signature. It's 144. I think that's where he... I'm seeing it in his shop, if that was what it was called, or the address was 144. Oh, that's interesting. Something like that. So he could be seeing that. It feels like when I connect to that number, he could be just seeing it to connect to this, I guess, to break it. He needs to break this um, this lifetime, oh. so it's not affecting him. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So it does have significance to him, not in the traditional ways of like the 144 or whatever it is that people are seeing, or it, this is his own thing. When you tune the, deeper into that, what was, why was his signature 144? I'm just getting a lot of energy in terms of like where he physically resided, that this was his creative space and nook. Because mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of like really lovely things that are happening by the window. Like he has this um, in his shop, it's kind of like a bay window where he would um, have his sewing machine and doing the shoes and whatnot and looking outside people passing by through their bikes and waving and whatnot. This was his safe space. Okay. So, so I just feel like the... there's a, an affiliation, I guess the, the number 144 was his address and his, like the address, the number of this home that he affiliated as home. Mm -hmm. And so he just, I guess that just, he just put them I don't feel like there was a shop name or anything like that. I feel like he just kept it low key. And so it was just affiliated to that number that it would be branded into the shoe because he was the shoemaker who made them from this space. Very interesting. And so that number is coming up a lot for him because he needs to clear this curse. I feel so. Yes, that's what it's mainly. I don't feel like it has anything to do with any of that spiritual mumbo jumbo stuff. Like it's, this is just very specific to him. And then once this curse is cleared, he can connect in an organic way to this aspect of him who has these creative abilities. Yes, very heart-centered, very motivated, super like, like he's a sage, like has a lot of that joy and love in him. Mm -hmm. Like he just wants to help his fellow people. Like there was just nothing more to it. He just knew what he was doing and knew how to share that uh preservation i guess of of knowing the um, the power of the soul the power of the spirit so he wanted to protect it in any ways possible hmm. he knew that the the secrets of this of the matrix it feels like because it was like understanding the this this place's duality right so it was just like okay well using your creative energies you can do you can create whatever the hell you want and change the path and of course like you know like synchronistically he is working with the feet so the feet are the path like they create the path um the path to move forward mm -hmm. well what's interesting too is that there's the in opposition to the shoemaker is the shoe bill oh shit i forgot about that i'm wondering if that entity is involved in this curse yeah i'm well that's the that's probably why i'm seeing like the penguin maybe that's what he's supposed to look like 
like I'm getting like the the like when I see Danny DeVito as the penguin, like it has the same face as the shoe build, like the eyebrows. Mm. Okay. So definitely another part following. Yeah. Knew exactly who to work through. So of course, you know, like taking advantage of uh, the wife who then gets ejected or disconnected from the physical in order to take dominion. So it's probably like, again, the energy of that shoemaker calling out a bat signal <laughs> to his aspect. So it's really interesting that the Batman thing is coming again. But yeah, shooting the bat signal, like we need to clear this. Oh, you mean his past self is connecting with his self now, his future self. Mm-hmm. And asking for him to clear this. Yes. Okay. So we are helping to clear this aspect. Anything that has affiliated via curse through the a black magic spell is being removed i do see that as we remove that from the aspect that the hands are starting to open again so they're mm. not being tightened and closed so they're opening up again and releasing um all his creative energy and whatnot is being pulled back towards him and allowing for that overflow to to come through mm. so bringing that also into brandon's field allowing for him to really start to merge with all positive things that have come from this shoemaker's life that can benefit him in this lifetime yeah. the sorry what the hands are an extension of the heart as well yeah there's a uh, definitely been like that kind of blockage here so we're clearing that um So yeah, placing strong boundary now from, from that lifetime into this one. So now it doesn't have to overlap now that we've gotten to the root of it. Uh, clearing any compounded energies from that first lifetime through the black magic in this one. So we're taking out any, any overlays or anything like that that has been affected. So contracts all burned all cut to any of those entities like penguin slash shoe bill whatever it is that it had initially begun as so clean that out i do get a feel like from the shoemaker that he is pleased i'm asking if there's anything else we need to know No, I'm not getting anything else from this lifetime, so that's good. Okay. Thank you for all of that. Okay. Are there any witchcraft or hexes here? Uh, just coming from that entity that is working through the hexes. So whatever is... So again, it, it, it all roots back to the octopus thing, so... Okay. Um, all removed and any psychic attacks here same so we're placing strong mirrors around him um, to deflect back to where they came from so they are not in his field or affecting him in any way thank you and the chakras he wants those removed yeah so we're just going to bring in the skewer up top into the crown so we're just going to take out all the root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and crown. Really vacuuming all of that thoroughly, removing it completely, allowing for his three main dantians to really enlarge him. So the heart, the, the light in the head, and also pelvis to merge into one pillar of light. 
So as that pillar of light is expanding itself, it's also removing any remaining energies of the chakras that if um, did not get picked up by the skewer. So they're just being completely cleared out. Any uh, contracts from that also have been burned. And any attempts to recreate the chakras have also been put as, at a stop so to not be remade again. So allowing for this light to really take precedence over his field. Okay. And would now be a good time to do astral bodies too? Yeah, we can go into that. Um, he does get affected a lot by the astral realm. So just because, again, through attraction point of what was in the field. So now that we've removed all of that, um, hopefully be able to prevent like all these like astral things from coming in. Um, so I'm getting that there are About 15 coming through. So also pulling through all of that. Anything that is also contracted in to create these like astral things, like bodies. Important in moving forward to really claim your dreams. Allowing for your own consciousness to really explore if need be and not for any of those like trickery things to happen in the dream time to create recreate astral bodies so yeah it's just really setting that those you know ground rules before you go to bed i do not consent to any like to go to the astral or to recreate any contracts to create astral bodies or whatever it is and also when you wake up i delete all contracts or any astral bodies that may have been created at night you know like that kind of thing So we are removing those completely, pulling them all back. So it's like really interesting, like when, you know, I go into the astral or like pulling in stuff. That's why I like we don't recommend astral traveling for anybody because of the amount of stuff that gets kind of pulled in. It's almost like, you know, a, a Swiffer, um, um, what do you call it? The ones that, that dust. Mm -hmm. it's like putting them into like a, a really narrow space and then when you pull it out it's all full of crap like that's mm -hmm. what happens we act as a magnet and so it's like when we go in there because they're so desperate to get out of the astral realm they stick to you like dust mm. or like glue and then they they come out with you and you're just full of them full of the the parasites full of their beings full of whatever it is mm -hmm. so um taken off the swiffer heads <laughs> just disposing of them um all astral bodies are now removed ensuring that there's no other hidden ones or so really thoroughly looking through destroying all any energies that have been pulled from him through these astral bodies are also being called back to him healed and called back to him to be reintegrated also, same for any um, soul fragmentations or anything like that that have been lost in that astral or that have been pulled there are also being healed and pulled back and reintegrated. So let me just thoroughly look one more time. Contracts also being burned. Okay, so that's good too. Thank you. Okay, I'm checking here for any parasites. Yeah, lots of parasites inside and outside. So those have, majority of them have been taken care of when we did the uh, vaccine clearing. Mm -hmm. So just to say that that one has been completed. Um, but yeah, the other parasites that are just generally in the field have been removed inside and outside. Thank you. And checking here for any earthbound souls so human souls that have died and get attached to living humans any earthbounds here no it was a hold on i'm getting a mail is he attached or what's going on here
I don't feel is affecting him in any way. I just feel like it's just ha somehow coming into the field. I'm asking if they know each other. Feels like a father, but like grandfather, let's say. I was asking if it was the grandfather or a great grandfather that was part on the mom's side. I don't. Is it? No. Kind of hard because it feels far. Like it's really far. It's hard to hear or to. Is I'm it? Just making sure that it's real. Um, because I I don't want to be bamboozled here. <laughs> just putting it in the net. Mm. feels like a degraded soul mm. is it maternal or paternal I feel like this is the grandfather I'm getting more so yes as I'm like clearing the energy of what was affected in that lifetime or how the octopus came in the first place mm -hmm. So is he stepping forward for assistance? I feel is in need of assistance to cross over properly. Uh, Why is he stuck? I feel there's a lot of grief he has. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of grief and guilt. Um, It just feel like it's just coming through. I'm asking guilt of what, if there's anything specific that needs to be cleared or acknowledged. He feels like guilty, like not able to show up um, for his family the way that he feels like he should have. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's almost parallel to, I guess, like where Brandon's at right now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in terms of his kids, like, you know, am I doing enough to show up or what I need to do? So it's, I guess that's just also being amplified or again, like cre recreating, like how these entities recreate those cycles, returning of repeating cycles. But I don't feel like it's similar in that sense. I just feel like there was so much emotional stuff going on that it just prevented him from connecting. It numbed him out so much, but then again was being used and taken advantage of by these entities. So he is just asking for, you know, forgiveness, I guess, through the family line now that we've cleared whatever happened here or like how they were affected. So I do feel like on a collective level in terms of the family that have been affected that they are just like it's okay you know like of course it's like of course like you were also taken advantage of by the system itself so it's not like you asked for this or you did this purposefully to us it happened to you you know like you got taken advantage of in a in a in a very vulnerable time so yeah so we're helping to assist removing any attachments calling back his soul parts really allowing for his divine spark to take and to help and assist in crossing over really his message that he leaves is that he is is just saying like in a motivational sense like I guess understanding what happened to him. So again, allowing for that self-compassion to to take to allow for that healing to occur. And same, he's saying like you need self-compassion as well. So whatever he's going through, it's just like allow for you to strengthen so that you can bypass all of the shit. You know, like he was not strong enough. He did not have that vision. He did not have that clarity to to bypass so that he could have done more but you have the opportunity to. So it's like strengthen yourself so that you can bypass all obstacles that might come in. So again, it goes back to that, what we saw earlier about you need to strengthen so that you can expand and move forward. Yeah. So he is feeling pretty good and confident, which is nice. And that we can cross him over. So that's good. 
Well, we send him on his way with love and gratitude and thank him for bringing this message to us today for Brandon. Okay, so that's good. No other earthbounds. Thank you. Um, all right. I'm sorry, Go I'm ahead. just getting a really strong pain in my heart mm -hmm. right now. I'm just ensuring that it's not necessarily a t an attack or anything like that. Um, I feel in full, in part, like, yeah, of course, they take advantage of that kind of thing. But I do feel that, yes, the heart is broken, like, to a certain degree. So I'm just, we're bringing healing to the heart and removing any potential attacks or hook-ins, like, from any entities that are trying to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to acknowledge the emotional pain that he might have stored in his body that hasn't really been validated or acknowledged yet that, you know, his experience is very difficult, what he's going through. So to validate that for him, that yes, his heart hurts. So, you know, to be separated from the children is really difficult as he had mentioned. And yeah, I feel like there needs to be a restoration of that um, lost time, let's say. Uh, that trauma that goes around that as well you know the fear of the unknown of what the future may hold but again we cannot really predict what the future may hold but at least he can take control where he has it in terms of strengthening himself so that he'll be ready for battle when the time comes okay. thank you Okay, and taking a look here for any portals in the field? No. Okay. And just checking for any portals in the home where he's staying. A mm, couple of portals present, um, maybe like eight or so. So closing those down, placing strong like protection around like the space that he sleeps and, you know, separating that energy, like his own, like where he has where he takes up space separate from the uh the owner or whoever he's living with um entity wise there are two that are being chopped up and removed uh the old like other astrals that are within the home are also being removed earthbounds i don't sense clearing through any um technological stuff frequencies that kind of stuff placing strong protection and mirror around the mirrors um, like I don't there's something weird in the mirror, but yeah, we're closing that down, like removing that completely. It's another, yeah, another type portal. So that has been shut down. Uh placing mirrors on all the windows to deflect energies back so that they don't come into the home. Clearing through the walls, ceilings, floors, electrical sockets, pipes. Just really doing a thorough cleanse. There's a lot of thought webs. Uh, I'm getting like spider-like energies too. So clearing that out of the home. Parasites also present, removing completely, really vacuuming through that. Placing strong protection around the home itself, around his, the space where he sleeps. A couple of tracker energies that I'm sensing as well. If I'm just checking to see if they're affiliated to him or to who he is staying with. I feel like they're more hers, but we're going to remove them because they're in the home itself. So so that doesn't affect him because it could, you know, of course, like cross over into him. Mm -hmm. So forget it. <sighs> Removing that. So detonating the space. Okay, good. Thank you for all of that. And just a few more things. Just checking for any remaining negative entity contracts or cords. Yeah, intention to really torch all, even minor ones, everything that maybe we missed. So intention to burn all that are coming through. 
looking for any hidden contracts, subcontracts, anything that's pulling him in via his network that's surrounding him. So all being burned, all being cut. Allowing for him to really be an independent, like in his field. Um, cutting all cords. Reinforcing any pushback. So we're really extending the field out. So learning how to really expand your field outward. So instead of like when you're experiencing something traumatic or uncomfortable, we tend to shrivel and shrink. We need to learn how to reprogram the self to push out. Yeah. Okay, so that is good. Okay. And just scanning to see what percentage of the soul he's embodying. Um, well, we've done a lot of the retrieval um, just throughout the session itself, uh, but initially it was pretty low. I mean, like I would say about like 12% or so. Um, so far we've recovered quite a bit, like we don't have that much left. So we're just going to call them all back through the other the interdimensions and or any places that we may not have um, explored yet. So we're just going to call them all back. Um, a lot of them were via the contracts as well. So and entities, etc. Um, so that's all being called back, healed, uh, yeah, filtered through and ensuring that everything is purely his reintegrating back into it and then sealing it off. Uh, divine spark was pretty like within like 20 to 30% or so, but it's because of all the stuff that we saw, a lot of it was being siphoned because that, um, well, the vampire is mainly like the, the, the main puller. Mm -hmm. So now that that's gone, we're just allowing for his light really to fill his body top to bottom and around. And because the grounding was being prevented, we're really anchoring all of it through and through, allowing for all his cells to pull and take up space, allowing for them to grab this light and refill himself. Filling any voids, filling, allowing for him to fill his own voids, not to seek it outside of himself so that he could bring in that self-compassion, self-love, um, confidence, self-esteem, whatever it is that he needs, really rebalancing the divine masculine and feminine energies inside. He really needs to get reacquainted with the self because of how much fuckery was going on over you know those lifetimes and past things, mm -hmm. getting to really know himself better. So that is good and soul retrieval is complete. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. So what would you say is Brandon's point of vulnerability or what is it that makes him vulnerable to these negative entities and energies? Well, it feels like they've been following him for quite some time, of course, as we saw. So already there, you know, we, we took, back a lot of that you know that power the creative power is really like very potent so that's one one big piece of the puzzle um you know the generational family stuff is also another thing so it's really important you know like in moving forward because we want to establish a really strong foundation and so to establish a strong foundation you have to do more inner work in order to peel through the layers and to really sift through it so that healing takes place so that you can ground yourself more and more and more into the body it becomes more familiar so that it can learn to again not shrink but to expand we want to expand so that upon exiting the matrix or like you know upon physical death that you'll be strong enough that you won't have any attachments or being pulled back through you know different layers of your trauma throughout lifetimes and interdimensionally that you'll be able to exert yourself and get out through that intention alone so yeah we want to detach as much as we possibly can through the healing work that's really like where it needs to be done and you know being taught how to do it and building yourself from that so this is another investment in self that you need to to take uh 
and venture into. Thank you for that. Okay, so any advice for aftercare besides doing the inner work, how to stay clear and protective? Um, just like practicing and, and bringing in energetic hygiene, if you haven't already, to really claim space, to really ground yourself, learning how to, um, yeah, protect yourself, you know, as much as you possibly can, morning, ideally, and before bed, and then mm -hmm. calling back all your energy from the night and from whatever you may have lost from your day. Okay. Thank you. How does this energy look and feel now compared, compared to when we started? I feel like it's like, because like when I was looking at it, like if I could just open my arms like this, I would touch something, but now I can really like expand my arms and not touch anything. So it's, it's a lot more open and the flow is like, I could see the, the energy flow, which is nice to see. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. Any final messages from Brandon's higher self? Um, just, I guess just as the, that grandfather energy had said, so to reiterate, you know, like have faith in yourself, you really need to, to begin there so that you can establish that role model, like just the energy alone that you'll emit and your confidence in self will, you, you can pass that to your children. You don't have to say a word. You just have to be yourself. So, you know, you'll, as you're like clearing more stuff as you move forward, I feel like this is really an important time to, to do the healing work as you're going traversing through this, this time where, you know, it has to do with custody of the children or at least being able to have contact. So it's really important to, to strengthen here right now. And so it's just saying like, don't lose faith in yourself and continue to believe in your own power and what you're capable of understanding how this place works is also very important because how easily it can hook you back in just through your thoughts through you know the spiraling and cycling um mental game and then pulling you out of your body so again it's like practicing coming into your body being grounded understanding like what are your thoughts and what aren't how you're being manipulated through things so understanding and observing your world around and just even your yourself and how you're reacting to the world so it's just like again bringing tons of self-awareness and doing the healing work alongside that so that you could make more space for yourself to take up confidently in your vessel so that you can um yeah, like battle, what needs to be battled along the way in your journey. So to just, yeah, just know that you have, I feel like it's just really giving you that uh, thumbs up, like a it's, you're good to go. Like, I feel like this is almost like taking off the training wheels and to go. Very good. Do we feel complete then? Yeah, yes. We answered all the questions. I don't know. Yes. We did? Okay, good. Yes, mm -hmm. then we're complete. All right, very good. So disconnecting from Brandon, fully and completely disconnecting, calling all of your energy back. I'm disconnecting too, calling all of my energy back. Disconnecting fully and completely, releasing all energy that is not your own. Both of you reinforcing your grounding roots, staying connected to the earth, grounding your energy into the body and to the earth, calling all of your energy and consciousness back into the physical form. All of your energy and consciousness is returning now into your body. All of your energy and consciousness is returning now into your physical form.
releasing all energy that is not your own. And as you come up, you will feel your frequency rising. Rising into those states of strength, empowerment, self-compassion, self-love. And knowing that you have everything you need to move forward. So feeling your frequency rising, feeling lighter and lighter as you come up more in sync with your divine self and your life here on earth. Feeling lighter and lighter and beginning to return to this present day and time. Bringing all of your energy and consciousness back to the here and now. All of your energy and consciousness is returning back to the present day and time. Beginning to wiggle your toes and your fingers, returning fully into the body and grounding into the here and now. And just beginning to wake up naturally, completely and fully. And you can begin to stretch and move and open your eyes when you're ready. Okay. Oh, there you are. Hello. Welcome back. Here I am. <laughs> How are you feeling? I feel better. I feel tired, but I feel good. I feel mentally tired, but I'm good. That good. answered a lot of questions. I had a lot of concerns. That. Thank you so much, Karen and Tina. That was mm -hmm. quite the load. Yeah. It's normal to feel tired at, tired after a big clearing like that because you're so used to having all of that energy in your space. So when it's removed, your body kind of goes into like a, a release effect, you know, like a letdown. Right, right. Yeah. So if you can, you know, take a nap or something, that would be beneficial or at least like rest or sit in the park or something you know okay that's what i was thinking karen yeah. mentioned hiking so that's that's definitely there as well okay i do enjoy my walk oh good yeah any insights that you had during that lots, lots? um the connections were just wild um but see your mark like different ages that i had kind of built up and as soon as she was saying like different numbers of age, I was correlating it to the events that happened. I'm like, that's absolutely spot on. And then she mentioned the family as far as the, from the father's side and the mother's side, both of it, it all, it all just fits. Um, the clearing as far as people around me and the, you know, the octopus tentacles kind of controlling and manipulating the rea reality that I'm experiencing. I felt that like I, I've, and it was coming from a place of like she said, like sitting anxiously, not knowing what to do, who to trust, and it um, it it just it answered why I'm feeling that way or why I'm sensing these things, all the way through. Very very interesting. I have homework to do, that's for sure, but it, it brought clarity for the kids, the ex. Some of the experiences I've had with family, um, close family, friends, and things like that, and at where I am now and what I need to do next, it's remarkable, to say the least. Yeah, it's a lot to process. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'll be doing the next little while. But yeah. It was, it was, it was excellent. No, yeah. it was excellent. 
Thank you. Well, we do suggest to listen back to it. That's why we record it. Like the more you listen to it, the more that energy is going to integrate, you know? So it's like every time you listen to it, you're receiving the healing energy again. And that's helping for the integration of that energy to start to build that foundation that you need, the strength. I agree. I agree. And I will and be doing so. Good. And every time you listen, also just pay attention to any new insights that might come up for you because you might hear things differently or, you know, might not, might hear something that you didn't hear the first time, you know, so um, okay. listening, listening back can be really important. Those that make the biggest shifts after clearing like this, listen to the recording repeatedly. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I, I can tell. Yeah. But I can definitely tell your energy is so much calmer and less scattered and way oh, more, yeah. no, way it's more like grounded. Yeah. It was, I, I just felt like, um, if you can imagine, like, it's an artist, I forget that artist, Alex Gray, maybe, where it's like this this character of a, of a human's uh, torso and head with like the head kind of cut off at the top. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like I was emptying programming the whole time, like, Okay, I'm putting that to the side. I don't need to worry about that anymore. I can move that off the table. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Just empty, like emptying of that subconscious programming. Yeah. Lots of it. Yeah. Very, very good. I feel, <laughs> I feel great. I feel tired, but I feel great. Good. Yeah. Well, just, yeah, it's allow for your body to process. So just give yourself the time and space to allow for that processing. Will do. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Do you feel okay enough to drive? Usually we don't do yeah. session. Okay. You feel yeah, awake yeah. enough? <laughs> yeah, I do. You're awake, do. like back to earth and. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Back, back down here. Okay. The moment. Yeah. Okay. Just okay. be, be careful driving. Will do. Okay. And I'll you send you take care. I'll send yeah, you the, the after I'll send you the recording and the aftercare stuff. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Okay. Thanks, ladies. All right, Brandon. It was a pleasure. Day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.